Hey everyone, Aaron here with a different kind of cut. I'm going to show you today how to cut up a New York strip loin. This is a, a New York strip steak um, that you know most commonly at every restaurant you go to and you're going to get a steak. It's either going to be filet mignon, ribeye, or a New York strip steak or top sirloin. This is definitely one of the number one steaks that every restaurant will carry. I'm going to show you how to do that today. Cut it up and I'm also going to show you which side of the New York strip that you're going to want to pick out when you go to a grocery store for the most, you know, um, tender side. So we'll start by opening it up. And one thing I want to show you guys, when you're opening these packages up, they tend to have blood kind of all over the place. The blood will soak to the bottom. So the easiest way to open these up is to have a garbage can set aside Cut the top part, I use the back side of my knife to cut it. And you see there's a little bit of blood already coming out here on the side. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna pick the meat up off of the plastic, just like so, and leave the rest of that blood sitting right down inside there. And that will go right into the garbage, just like that. So that's the easiest way to get it, and then you don't get blood all over the place. But what we're going to do here first is we're going to kind of clean up the bottom here and take this off. This is where the ribs lie on, on top of the meat um, in, when it's actually on the cow. So we're just going to kind of come in here with our knife and just kind of clean this up a little bit. I'm going to toss that because it actually has little chunks of bone. You can actually see there's a chunk of bone right there. So we're going to take that off. We're going to clean it up. And we're doing that across the whole entire bottom side of this New York strip. So we get a nice clean surface. This, I don't feel any bones in. There's a little bit of hard gristle in there. I'm gonna toss that into my grind because it'll grind up, it'll take the meat off and it'll leave the gristle inside the head of the grinder. So we're gonna take that and keep that. Otherwise, this one here looks pretty good. You don't have to clean too much off of it. Now for the top side, you can, you can also take this off too. You can see a little bit of burn mark from the from the, um, the cryovac. When they run it through the hot bath to shrink the cryovac around it, it kind of burns the meat a little bit. So if you want to, you can take that off. It'll make it look nicer if you're throwing it in a service case and it won't turn brown as quick. So if you are cutting this up to throw into a service case, you're gonna wanna definitely take that off because if you don't, within a day, that'll turn brown and it won't look like a very good steak sitting up in your service counter. So you take that brown off and it'll look a little nicer. So now I'm gonna flip it over and what I do is I always try to trim my steaks first when before I cut them into steaks because it's a little bit easier to do. So I kind of feel around and I feel for the fat. You can see there's a lot of fat in here, but what I'm gonna do is kind of take a little bit off at a time so I'm not taking too much fat off or too much meat along with the fat. So I'm just gonna kinda take little slivers off and this is the sirloin end. This is the end that actually butts up against the sirloin. You can see right here this little tiny circle that's there. That's actually that first cut off of the top sirloin in my last video that you wanna square up all your cuts with. So that is gonna be, this side here is actually gonna be your toughest side when it comes to a steak. This side here is gonna be closer to your ribeye. It doesn't have that little round spot on it. So it's gonna be more of like a, a ribeye end on that side. But like I said, I'm just gonna take off a little bit, get it right down to that silver skin because this stuff has, it has a pretty thick layer of silver skin on the top of the New York strips. We're gonna cut that fat right off of here and get it down to the silver skin. Now, because this side has that round and there's like from here to here, you can kind of see where the sirloin kind of overlaps on top of the New York strip. You kind of have to get your knife up underneath there and wedge it so that way you can actually get the fat out of there. Otherwise, uh, if you come this way, you're gonna take that chunk of meat right out of there and you don't wanna do that. So we're gonna go like this and just kind of pull a little off at a time. Now, I've been cutting meat for years, so I know that there's gonna be a a chunk of fat that runs through here. You can kind of see when you squeeze it, you can see right where it's at. I'm gonna take that off now 
at an angle, just like that. Okay, that's going right into grime. I'm just gonna square up the end so it looks nice, just like that. Now, like I said, there's that sirloin right here. You can feel it, but you can also feel there's some more fat here I wanna get out of here. It's pretty tough. You can feel it's pretty hard. So I'm just gonna kind of wedge it out of there. Now, if you wanted to, you could cut this into steaks first and then cut the fat off so you know you're not gonna get any meat. But it's a little easier to do it when it's whole than it is to do it when you've already got it cut into steaks. So, just almost done here. Now that I got all that off, right? So you can see it feels all the same. You can kind of tell that most of the fat's off. I still did leave a little tail on here. So that way when I go to cut this up, it's gonna look really nice. But there is a really tough silver skin right here. And you can see it at the end. I'm gonna take that off right now. I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna get my knife up in there just like this. And take that off. We're gonna clean it up just like that. That way, when I go to cut these into steaks, I don't have any people complaining about tough silver skin on there. So, next step is we're gonna cut it into steaks. This is pretty much ready to go. All we gotta do is slice it up. You can take this ink off if you want to. It's totally edible. You don't have to take it off, but if you're putting it in a service counter, you're gonna wanna take it off, just so it looks a little nicer in your, in your case, okay? So now, we're starting at the sirloin end. Um, and we're gonna take a nice facing off of this because this is, like I said, it's the sirloin end, it's gonna be the toughest end. I'm gonna take it all the way down to this back corner and the front corner up here. So it's gonna be a pretty decent facing. Take it off just like that, okay? That's gonna go into stir fry. We'll cut it up into stir fry later. Then you are good to go to just start cutting your steaks. Okay. And like I said before in the last videos, you can you can definitely cut them up however thick you want, but I always cut mine a little thicker. That way, if somebody wants a thinner steak, I can cut them in half. But for the most part, we generally cook them up just like this. About an inch and a half to, you know, an inch and three quarters. So, if you take a look at this first cut, the very first cut that I cut off of here, just like that. Look at that one. This part right here is that little triangle piece that you were looking at on the top of the New York strip. That is sirloin, that's top sirloin. It's basically, basically the same thing. So when I get to this last cut, I'll show you the difference of what the first cut off of the ribeye, or the last cut off the ribeye, the first cut off of the New York strip, looks like and it's gonna look pretty much like a really lean ribeye okay, got two more nice cuts out of this and what you want to do is you want to kind of as you're cutting you kind of want to check to make sure that you're gonna end up with even steaks by the time you get to the end. So now take a look at this. It's got a really nasty looking end here. I'm gonna clean that up and square it up so it looks a little bit nicer and cooks a little nicer. So now this is the very last cut off of that New York strip. This is also gonna go right into stir fry. So if you take a look at this, that looks like a really lean ribeye because it's actually the last cut off of the New York strip and the first cut off of, right next to the first cut off of the ribeye. This one here is the last cut off of the top sirloin. Uh, first cut off of the New York strip, closer to the sirloin end. But you can see that it's got this gristle that runs through here. So that's gonna be a little bit tougher of a steak than this side. This is gonna grill out more like a ribeye versus this side's gonna grill up more like a top sirloin. So the other thing you can do too is you can see this here. If, you, if you're cutting these at home for yourself, you can cut that all off, throw that into grind, 
and you'll have a little bit better quality steak, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that off and now look at it. Even if you were to throw that into a service counter, the, those steaks are going to look really good. They're going to present really nice and you're going to have um, a good, good grilling quality experience here. So that is it for the video, unless you know you want to see me cut up stir fry, which you probably don't. You've seen them in the other videos. So this is all going into stir fry for the most part. Um, the little things here going into grind, and then obviously all this fat and stuff's going into grind as well. And we're gonna save the good meat for stir fry. And that concludes the video for today. So hopefully this helped you out. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and we got more videos to come. And uh, let me know in the comments below what you want to see cut up i got we can do turkey we can do chicken we can do pork we can do venison whatever you want to know let me know and i'll take care of it for you thanks for watching